about a week ago I posted my first design related YouTube video and by then I've already learned so much. Like the fact that I actually need to hook up my microphone and make sure it's working so it doesn't sound like I live in the middle of Times Square, which I don't, but sometimes it feels that way. Also that I either need to wear my contacts or position my body in a way so that you can see my eyeballs through the glare on my glasses. And in general to be all around less awkward. By now you've probably found the other extremely weird and embarrassing videos on my YouTube channel and for that you're welcome and I'm sorry. Just be lucky they're not all called What I Eat in a Day and H&M Haul. But if you're watching this, which you are, thanks for sticking around and welcome back to the second episode of this video design series where I talk about the interior design process how I designed my new apartment, and some tips and tricks on how to design your own space. Since I'm apparently a YouTuber now, and this is what the internet says I need to do, I'm reminding you to subscribe to my channel if you think I have any potential on continuing this at all. Like this video if you find my terrible sarcasm mildly entertaining. And click the little bell, which apparently is something to notify you about when I stop being a lazy piece of shit and upload my next video. Enough of me babbling, on to the content. The answer is literally anything. It could be a mood board, a single image, an object, a feeling, a color, literally anything could be your inspiration. You can have a room inspired by an entire object, whether that be displaying the object in the center of the room and creating a space that accents that, or a space inspired by its form and colors. It can be as simple as finding an image of an interior and wanting to replicate its design and aesthetics. Now here's an example of a mood board I made a while back that was inspired by a feeling or technically by the desire to evoke a feeling. It was for a hospitality project back in grad school and honestly a lot of my design intent back then was very questionable but you know what I'm a lot I've grown a lot since then so we'll just like say whatever it's fine but anyways the goal of this project was to evoke the feeling of walking through a forest such as mystery and curiosity. This one material board was then the basis of design for every aspect of the project from materials to floor plan and so on. I would say if you're not any kind of designer or artist or right-brained individual whatsoever, then gaining inspiration from an interior space is probably gonna be the easiest for you to do, rather than trying to figure out, how do I make a room that feels like the color green? Moral of the story, the more you do it, the more that you immerse yourself in inspiration, the easier it gets. And then you can start talking about feng shui and all that shit. Press your friends. They won't know what you're talking about anyways, it's fine. When creating a mood board, I like to gather a bunch of images that I find appealing or attractive or images that I think will fit the aesthetic that I'm going for and either create a Pinterest board or compile them all into a folder on my computer so that I have them all in one place. And when I say collect a variety of images, I don't mean of different interior spaces. I mean of interior spaces along with furniture and objects and materials and colors. All of these images will balance each other out in the palette and create one cohesive palette. Materiality is always one thing I like to have in my palettes because it gives a hint into the specific materials that I should be using in my project. And the same goes for color. Another way to image search is to Google spaces that have similar features as your space. So if you have a room that has blue walls and wood floors, Google blue walls, wood floors, design and see what comes up. This always inspires me and gives me a little bit more possibilities on what I could do with my own space just by seeing how other people have done it. Also, another quick tip, if you're really struggling on image searching, literally put the word design after everything. I swear to God, it's a magic word and everything will pop up. One thing that I need to stress and listen up, plants and white walls are not design. Yes, having an all white interior and plants is an aesthetic and that's fine if that's what you want to but if you're looking at an image and you are really attracted to it, don't let the plants blind your creative eye. Those images are most likely staged and you know your plants will never look that good. Instead, pay attention to everything else that's happening in the room. And if the answer is nothing special, then there's your answer. Now this palette will be the basis of your design and you should relate back to it for every design decision. It's easy to forget about your inspiration when you're really deep into a project, which 100% I am guilty of and I need to be better about it. But I find that when I look back at my inspiration board or any inspiration image, it really grounds me and it helps me to know where and how I need to move forward with a project. I don't know why I'm doing this, I'm literally not Italian. When beginning to implement your design from your inspiration images, it's time to pay close attention onto the different features in the photo. Dissect it. What's in it? What did you like about it? What kind of colors are they using that you can bring into your space? What about 
the materials that they're using that you can bring into your space. The way that they hang things on the walls. What are they hanging on the walls? The furniture. Is this room just way cleaner than your room? Because if so, you don't need to redesign it. Literally just vacuum. And that's all I have to say about that. My next video will be a little less tips and tricksy and a little bit more technical. I'll be walking you through a basic floor plan of my new apartment and giving you a glimpse into some of the fancy computer tools that I use to envision space and create pretty renderings. Thanks again for choosing to watch this video of me talking to myself while you lay in your bed and eat old pizza that you bought last night. If your heart so desires it, you can follow me on Instagram, either at Kelsey Design, where I post design related things about whatever I want. Or you can follow my personal account where I post narcissistic selfies and about how meat is murder. Thanks again. How do I do an outro? I feel like I'm like so weird. Bye camera.